glutinous, gluten that, gluten free aisle in your grocery store, what's up with gluten? What's going on with our diet? So I would like to talk about this, the importance food and your diet actually has on your path towards true health and wellness. So we originally thought then we get this, uh, this idea that, well, I don't have celiac disease. I don't have to worry about gluten. It goes much further than that. So if you do have celiac disease, you probably already know this. But if you have autoimmune conditions that maybe runs in the family, or maybe you're starting to hear some of your friends about the same age or running into it, or maybe you have young children, you want to just know, hey, what are some tips that I can actually help my children, or maybe even uh, teach other people to raise healthier children? But what if you're that individual who's just, you know what, I, I just want to make a change. I don't know where to start, but I just want to make some type of change. And absolutely, if you're that individual who's also looking to extend your wellness journey and you want to learn a little bit more, this is the information that I want to share with you. So what is gluten? Well, by definition, and we look at these definitions, they're in red. It's, it's a little um, thinking about just what it is that's in our food. It's a little like, okay, why is this there? So gluten by definition is the tenacious elastic protein substances, mainly in flour, wheat flour, or wheat itself, that gives cohesiveness to dough. So if we follow the thesaurus, that's like a gum, a binder, a paste. And in Latin, gluten means glue. So we have this protein molecule, this thing that is within our food that is making sure this dough and everything else is able to stay together. And it's pulling. That's why it says tenacious. It's pulling everything together. And it's giving that shape to dough. So where can we find this? I mean, well, in common knowledge, and many, many individuals now listening to this probably know, hey, it's in wheat. Yeah, that's common knowledge says, yes, gluten can be found in wheat but it can be also found in barley, rye, and oats. So if you're a beer drinker, or you enjoy beer, and if there's, it's made from a barley, it's, hey, there's gluten in there. If you're looking for substitutes for other stuff, such as a rye bread, hey, there's gluten in there as well. And if you do make your oats and oatmeal in the morning, and if you just simply add water to your oats and then heat it up, what is it? It's a paste. Again, it's that, that cohesive, tenacious protein that's giving that form or shape to your oatmeal. But the odd thing is gluten can be found elsewhere. So one of those being imitation meats. So that's your tofu, that's your, your fake stuff, your mock duck. And surprisingly, it's also found in soy sauce, ice cream, and ketchup. Odd to think where we, hey, this is commonly wheat, but we're finding other parts too. Remember, because what is it? It's a binder. It's glue, it's gum. It's there to make sure that things stick together and form a shape. So why is this important? And it's because of this mechanism of injury. The mechanism of injury itself. This is all through the most research, uh, most uh, up-to-date research in that how does gluten affect the body? So without staring at that image and just being like, all right, it's, it's been forever since I took even a biology class. I can't make sense of this. Let's follow along here. So gluten itself is, remember, it's that protein that's found in food. What it does is it's going to go and it's going to attach itself to the small intestines and those little finger projections that sweep back and forth. What's their job? Their job is to actually absorb nutrients, absorb some of those carbohydrates that are broken down to its smallest form so that your body can use it for energy or you can use it to help just support other normal functions with your body. When gluten comes around, remember it's a protein, and that protein is gonna have a sensor with it, it's gonna attach onto that. Your small intestines aren't gonna really like it. So what does it do? It's gonna open up the space between every single cell in that area. Now, because it's gonna open up that space, some very large molecules, huge pieces of food can actually go in and enter into the bloodstream. So gluten is going to go into the small intestine. Your body's trying to digest it, but it's just getting the wrong sensor because proteins are able to um, transmit different messages. So it's going to be like, I don't really like this. 
it's going to respond by opening up the space between the cells so larger molecules can actually enter in your bloodstream. And then when that happens, you got all these smaller molecules that's your immune system that's trying to sense what's in the bloodstream, what's normal, what should be there, and what's considered an invader. When we see an invader, your immune system is going to respond and try and go attack it and kill it because it's trying to protect your body. So we know through research that gluten is going to increase the size between those cells. And then we also know this, that it doesn't matter if you have an autoimmune condition. This is just how your body naturally responds to this. As well as that, we're going to get inflammation and their cellular stress. So that means inflammation and cellular stretch, stress over time, your cells start to change. When your cells start to change, your own immune system doesn't recognize it. So your own immune system starts to attack it. And that's how we get an autoimmune condition. And so that takes a long period, a long time of continuous stress on your body to eventually develop into an autoimmune condition. So this is why we're noticing a number of individuals as they start to get into their later 40s or 50s, maybe early 60s, that's kind of pushing it, they're running to autoimmune conditions because what's happened, their entire cells of their digestive system has changed. Their own body is starting to attack them. So that's a, that's a long-term approach of like, hey, this is what happens with gluten when you, when you get injured or when you start injuring the area. But then another thing is, well, what's in the short term? Short term is always what we want to look for as well. So signs and symptoms, if you're, if you're having gluten, you're getting injured by it. If, after you eat, if you're having that brain fog, if you're feeling tired, bloating, or even leaky gut. So that means whenever you fart or you pass wind or pass gas, it smells awful. So those are signs and symptoms that, hey, there's damage going on to the lining of your gut. There's damage, there's entering the bloodstream. There's molecules that enter the bloodstream that shouldn't be there. But it's not just that, that gluten affects. It's also going to affect your nervous system. So research has shown that gluten can cause neurological damage. So this is fantastic for children. I mean, we're talking about uncoordinated movement, decreased muscle tone, developmental delay, even learning disorders. So the best research and evidence is actually showing individuals on the autism spectrum that when they are on a gluten-free diet, they're their, uh, for, for bad, lack of a better word, their symptoms are better, or their, their symptoms aren't more, are less apparent, that they're able to actually then move up and have increase in cognitive function. And again, that's on the autism spectrum. But as a chiropractor, I'm focused on a few other things. We see a number of individuals, it's depression. Why? Because gluten, again, is that protein, and it's actually attacking and destroying the important hormone of serotonin. Low serotonin levels, it's a cause of depression. That's why individuals who are prescribed for an uh, uh, antidepressant, that's a serotonin, uh, selective serotonin reuptake. So they're, they're there to make sure that there's more serotonin boosted. And on top of that, deal with a lot of individuals who are complaining of migraines and headaches. So it's making sure as we progress through care, it's, hey, what's your diet looking like? I want you to eliminate this because it can develop neurological uh, disorders as well. So when's the best time to start this? Easiest answer, start today. But ultimately it's start when you're ready to make a change in your life. That's the biggest difference. So how, what are some ways that you can start today? Remove the gluten. We've already gone through best evidence and research. This is how the mechanism of your body works and reacts to it remove it. Get rid of the thing that's hurting you. But on top of that, if you want to take a next step up, repair your body. So a fantastic that I encourage everyone to be on because it's all about cellular health and structure and function is a fish oil. As well as that, especially in the Midwest, taking a vitamin D3 that's in its active form with K2. K2 is going to make sure that that vitamin D3 is going to go to the bone where it's going to be used really well. If you don't have that K2, it's just going to go and deposit into your arteries and it's not worth it. So I encourage individuals in the Midwest, vitamin D3 with K2, 
at about that 5,000 IU. Most individuals say one or two. We're in an area of the world where it's safe to take 5,000 for many people, many, many people. But also that, take it up the next level. We have damage going on to your gut. It's from your diet, it's from gluten. Let's consider this. Let's get some better, uh, better probiotics. Let's, let's get the, the gut health, everything that is important about making sure we have a nice and gut flora to your immune system. Let's consider a probiotic and even a multivitamin just for general health and wellness. So I hope you've learned something today. Most importantly, the mechanism of gluten. Remember, it's that protein. It can do a lot of weird stuff to your body, but ultimately it's a glue, it's a binder, and it's there and it's damaging you every single day. Regardless if you have an autoimmune condition or if you believe you're just a normal healthy individual, the mechanisms show every time you eat gluten, you're damaging your body. Please connect with me. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. We have a blog as well. And we are conveniently located in Maple Grove. So feel free, check us out, check our website, give my office a call if you have any questions, 763-432-3932. Thanks, everyone.